Mrs. Savanador, Mrs. Guzman, Mr. Ochoa, Ms. Jeske, members of the faculty, parents, and students, welcome to the 2020 National Honor Society Induction Ceremony. We are gathered here to formally recognize these students who have been selected by the faculty council of our school for successfully completing their candidacy and are being inducted as new members of our National Honor Society chapter. For current members and those former members who may be among our viewers, we hope this will serve to remind you of the standards of excellence you too are charged with maintaining as members of the United States' oldest, largest, and most prestigious student recognition program. The National Honor Society was founded in 1921 as an organization to recognize and encourage academic achievement while also developing other characteristics essential to productive citizens. These ideals of scholarship, character, service, and leadership remain as necessary and relevant today as they were in 1921. Now, almost 100 years later, the National Honor Society has become a prestigious organization, ranking high among administrators, faculty members, parents, and colleges across the United States. Members maintain and extend the qualities that won them selection. Membership is thus both an honor and a commitment. I would like to now invite Mrs. Afanador to come and pray for us as we open our ceremony. We would like to seek to glorify God and give him thanks for the many gifts and blessings he has given to each of us. Please join me as we pray and to bless our time together right now. Father God, what a privilege it is to celebrate tonight. Celebrate this time of um, accomplishment, of progress, of growth, and of hope for the future. We pray for each one of the students that are being inducted tonight to the National Honor Society, that this will be a moment to remember. It will be a moment that will help keep them focused on continuing to strive towards the goals that are represented with this organization. Father, we pray that each one will want to serve you and serve others, that they will seek integrity in their character, that they will seek to lead, and they will seek to always be growing academically and have a curiosity about learning about life. Father, we pray that tonight, as we're together, that this will just be truly a time of celebration and of looking forward for even better things to come. In your name we pray. Amen. Our chapter at El Camino Academy has been inducting new members since 2003. Today's ceremony indicates the continuing emphasis on excellence that we represent for our school and community. Throughout the year, members of our chapter serve as role models for other students. In addition to the strong academic records which established your eligibility for membership, our chapter members are leaders in student organizations and have served our school and community through many activities. We are proud of your accomplishments and welcome you, the new members who bring fresh energy and enthusiasm to our continuing work as National Honor Society members. I am honored to introduce our devotional speaker, Ms. Gomez, also known as Prof. Andrea to you. Prof. Andrea has taught Spanish here at ECA for 13 years. When I asked her 12th grade students what they love and appreciate about her, here are a few things they said. Prof. Andrea is attentive, thoughtful, caring, patient, and wise. She is dedicated to and passionate about what she teaches and who she teaches. She is the quintessential raconteur who weaves wisdom in the story she tells. Will you join me in welcoming Prof. Andrea? Un saludo muy especial para todos. Quiero que escuchen esta historia. Un bebé camello y su madre se encontraban descansando bajo un árbol. Entonces el pequeño preguntó a su mamá, ¿Por qué los camellos tenemos joroba? La mamá camello pensó un momento y respondió, nosotros somos animales del desierto, por eso tenemos una joroba para almacenar agua y poder sobrevivir en medio del calor. El pequeño animal pensó un rato en la respuesta y luego dijo, ¿Por qué nuestras piernas son tan largas? 
la madre respondió, son para caminar en medio del desierto. Después de un rato, el bebé volvió a preguntar, ¿por qué nuestras pestañas son tan largas? A veces siento que estorban la visión. Ella respondió, esas enormes pestañas protegen tus ojos de la arena del desierto cuando el viento sopla. El pequeño pensó y pensó. Luego dijo, ya veo. Entonces, si la joroba es para almacenar agua cuando estamos en el desierto, las piernas largas son para caminar mejor en el desierto y las enormes pestañas son para protegernos de la arena del desierto, ¿qué hacemos en un zoológico? La lección que podemos aprender de este relato es que nuestros talentos y habilidades solamente son útiles si estamos en el lugar correcto y en el momento correcto. De lo contrario, se desperdiciarían. Ustedes, queridos miembros de la Sociedad de Honor, han sido elegidos porque tienen cualidades que los hacen merecedores de conformar este selecto grupo. Se destacan por su rendimiento académico, por su carácter, por su liderazgo y por su servicio. Y es de este último atributo del que quiero hablarles hoy. Leamos en Primera de Pedro, capítulo 4, versículo 10. Ponga cada uno al servicio de los demás el don que haya recibido y sea un buen administrador de la gracia de Dios en sus diferentes manifestaciones. En otra versión dice, Según cada uno ha recibido un don especial, úselo para servir a otros. Cada uno de ustedes ha recibido talentos naturales para servir a Dios. En su palabra vemos que Él nos habla de los distintos dones que ha entregado a sus hijos. Por ejemplo, en Romanos 12 habla de que cada uno es miembro de un mismo cuerpo cuya cabeza es Cristo. En 1 Corintios 12 nos dice que hay diversidad de dones, pero un solo espíritu. Y en Efesios 4 nos recuerda que Cristo mismo nos ha dado dones para que seamos unánimes en la fe y nos edifiquemos en amor. Ahora bien, es importante aclarar tres cosas en cuanto a los dones. Primero, saber cuál es. ¿O cuáles son los dones que Dios nos ha dado? Para eso debemos preguntarle a Él en oración. Jeremías 33.3 dice, Clama a mí y yo te responderé, y te enseñaré cosas grandes y ocultas que tú no conoces. Segundo, usarlos con un propósito. Dios quiere que sirvamos a otros. Los talentos o dones que hemos recibido nunca son para nosotros mismos, sino para ponerlos al servicio de los demás. Y tercero, ejercitarlos. Si aún sabiendo cuál es nuestro don, no lo usamos, pues de nada sirve. Recuerda lo que pasó con el siervo negligente de la parábola de los talentos en el capítulo 25 de Mateo, versículos 25 al 29. Por lo cual, tuve miedo y fui y escondí tu talento en la tierra. Aquí tienes lo que es tuyo. Respondiendo su señor, le dijo, siervo malo y negligente, ¿sabías que ciego donde no sembré y que recojo donde no esparcí? Por tanto, debías haber dado mi dinero a los banqueros, y al venir yo, hubiera recibido lo que es mío con los intereses. Quitadle pues el talento y dadlo al que tiene diez talentos, porque al que tiene le será dado y tendrá más, y al que no tiene, aún lo que tiene le será quitado. Quiero dejarlos con esta reflexión. Una vez que ustedes sepan cuáles son esos talentos 
que Dios les ha dado y los ejerciten sirviendo a otros con ellos, piensen también en el mundo que está a su alrededor. El mundo de afuera, ese mundo hostil, indiferente a las cosas de Dios, ese que tiene su propia escala de valores, pero que aún así anda buscando respuestas. Ustedes tienen las respuestas. La respuesta es Cristo y ustedes lo tienen en su corazón. Es cierto que no será fácil. En el tiempo en que Pedro escribió esta carta a los creyentes, ellos estaban pasando por una situación difícil. Estaban siendo dispersos y estaban sufriendo persecución por causa de Cristo. Sin embargo, el apóstol los anima a que sean buenos administradores de la gracia dada por Dios, que con su servicio lo glorifiquen a Él. Ustedes hoy, a diferencia de ese pequeño camello que vimos al comienzo de la historia, están en el lugar correcto y en el momento correcto para que activen sus dones, para que sirvan a otros y a través de eso glorifiquen a Dios. Sin importar lo que venga, no sabemos qué va a ocurrir mañana, no sabemos a dónde van a ir ustedes, no sabemos qué tiempos nos esperan, no sabemos cuál va a ser el camino que Dios les va a mostrar. Pero ustedes hoy están siendo equipados y enviados para servir. Dios les bendiga. Leaders of El Camino Academy will now review these qualities for the candidates. It is my honor to introduce the high school principal of El Camino Academy, Mrs. Guzman, to review the quality of scholarship. Scholarship denotes a commitment to learning. A student is willing to spend hours in reading and study, knowing the lasting benefits of a cultivated mind. We should continue to learn even when formal education has ended for human education ends only with the end of life. Knowledge is one great element in life which leads to the highest success and it can be acquired in only one way, through diligence, discipline, and effort. Learning furnishes the lamp by which we read the past and the light that illuminates the future. Candidates have the charge to continually expand their world through the opportunities inherent in scholarship. Proverbs 1, 5 to 7 says, Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance. For understanding proverbs and parables, the saying and the riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. It is now my honor to introduce the director of El Camino Academy, Mrs. Afana Dor, to review the quality of leadership. Leadership should exert a wholesome influence on the school. In taking initiative in the classroom and in school activities, the real leader strives to train and aid others to reach their common goals of success. The price of leadership is sacrifice the willingness to yield one's personal interest to the interests of others. A leader has self-confidence and will go forward when others hesitate. No matter what power and resources may exist in a school, in a community, or a nation, they are ineffectual with the guide, without the guidance of a wise leader. Leadership is always needed. Thus, to lead is a meaningful and substantive charge to each of our members. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16 state, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven.
It is my honor to introduce the Director of Community Care for El Camino Academy, Mr. Ochoa, to review the quality of service. The National Honor Society believes that service can be established in the routine of a day's work where many opportunities arise to help others both at school and in the community. A willingness to work for the benefit of those in need without monetary compensation or public recognition is the quality we seek in our membership and promote for the entire student body. We are committed to volunteering our time and talents to the creation of a better tomorrow. 1 Peter 4 verses 10 and 11 states, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others, as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory, the power forever and ever. Amen. It is my honor to introduce El Camino Academy's Discipleship Coordinator, Ms. Jeske, to review the quality of character. National Honor Society believes that character is the force within the individual that distinguishes each person from others. It creates for us our individuality, our goodness. It is that without which no one can respect oneself, nor hope to attain the respect of others. It is the force of character that guides one through life and, once developed, grows steadily within. Character is achieved and not received. It is the product of constant thought and action, the daily striving to make the right choice. The problem of character is the problem of self-control. We must be, in reality, what we wish to appear to others, to be rather than to seem. By demonstrating such qualities as respect, responsibility, trustworthiness, fairness, caring, and citizenship, we may hope to prove by example that we value character. Colossians 3, 12 through 14 reminds us, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. New inductees, we are proud to welcome each of you on behalf of teachers, staff, and school board. When your name is called, the teacher you selected will introduce you. The NHS stole you are wearing in your picture is the one you will wear later at graduation. At this time, I would like to introduce Laura Moreno. It is a delight to introduce Laura Moreno this morning. I have gotten to know Laura very well this year as we have met to talk about her future. What a joy it has been to see Laura's sense of purpose and direction begin to crystallize from having no clear idea of what she wanted to study to realizing that her life purpose is to bring about change in vulnerable communities, whether using her knowledge of economics or practicing as a lawyer. As Laura has gained clarity about her purpose, she has literally blossomed before my eyes. Whether teaching elementary school kids in ECA's Arts and Crafts Elective, or working with Bogota's Rotary Club to plant community gardens and teach English, or traveling to Amazonas to serve the Tacuna tribe, Laura has developed a lifestyle of service. This service orientation combined with her leadership initiatives and intellectual curiosity has made her a standout in the ECA community and will make her a standout in whatever arena God calls her to. This world does not just need people, passionate people, it needs people with a God-given vision and purpose to love as Jesus loves and to serve as Jesus served. Today, we celebrate you, Laura, and we welcome you into the National Honor Society. Soon we will celebrate you as you prepare to launch out from ECA. 
My word of encouragement to you is to walk closely with Jesus, love those he loves, and serve wholeheartedly. You were made for and called to this. At this time, Ms. Jeske will introduce Ana Maria Navarro. Anima, you did it! Um, Anima is a joy to have in and out of the classroom. Um, she is so good. She has the ability to welcome others into any environment and help them feel loved, help them feel wanted, and help them feel heard. Um, and the service projects and the mission trips that I have been on with her, she is so good at um, just sitting with the kids, loving them like Jesus, laughing with them, even if she doesn't really understand their language. Um, and I've loved having you in the play this year as well, Anima. You um, just amaze me. I think about where you were in ninth grade, um, really scared to give speeches, to talk in front of people, and look how far you've come. Would you ever have guessed that your senior year you would have been the main character in the spring play? Just amazing. So I'm so proud of you and the growth that I've seen in you the past four years, and I pray that God will continue to use you in amazing ways to love other people around him. Congrats, Anima. Love you. At this time, Ms. Jeske will introduce Laura Pinzon. So I've had the distinct privilege of being Lalice's English teacher for three out of the four years um, here in high school. And it's been so amazing to watch her grow as a student, recognizing the gifts and the talents and um, just the, the difference that she can add to, to the classroom and to her classmates. Um, I loved our time in 10th grade, Lalis, because you were able to recognize that you have so many creative ideas, so many things to add to your, your classmates um, and to your class. And um, I've also loved this year getting to work on the play with, with you, Lalis, as student director. Um, Lalis, you've been proactive, reliable, responsible, trustworthy, and um, you really take initiative when you see a problem that needs to be done. And um, I've also loved our time together um, when we've been able to go on our mission trip last year. Um, it was so fun to watch you grow and learning how to delegate. Um, and be so organized. Um, you're very skilled at that. And um, you can see the needs in a situation and recognize what needs to be done to accomplish that goal as a team. Um, and then you're able to delegate and manage the situation until the goal's done and accomplished. And so that's a really unique skill set um, that that's gonna take you far in life. And I'm excited to see how God uses that in your life. Um, uh, for your good and for his glory. So proud of you, Lalise, and all your hard work um, to get into NHS. You did it. Love you. At this time, Ms. Conrad will introduce Antonella Anento. Hello, everyone. I'm Ms. Conrad. I have had the pleasure of walking with Antonella as her homeroom teacher for the past two years and as her honors English teacher this year. In the two years that I've known Antonella, I have watched her grow in the qualities that are representative of National Honor Society members. There is much more to Antonella than the pristine, fashionable, cool and composed young woman who glides through our halls. In the last year, Anto has truly begun to embrace her academic side. She has served as a profound discussion leader in English class this year, drawing out her peers and prodding them to think more deeply. As senior year and university draw nearer, I love listening to Anto contemplate the world around her, considering how she might be a part of transforming it through the career path she chooses. During our service trip to La Calera in September, Anto was quick to engage with the students we were serving. From sophomore year to junior year, Antonella has matured immensely and is emerging as a leader in her class, and for that, I am so thankful. Antonella, my prayer for you is that you would become even more deeply rooted in your faith, like a tree planted by streams of water, as David wrote in Psalm 1, and that as you continue to seek the Lord, you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is true and faithful. Anto, I love you, and I'm so proud of you. Congratulations on joining the ranks of the National Honor Society. At this time, Michelle Cross will introduce Maria Fernanda Diaz. Hello, oh, my name is Ms. Shawcross, and I have the honor of introducing Mafe Diaz to you all. Mafe is an exemplary student. She is very dedicated and works hard in the classroom with both integrity and eagerness. 
she is very strong in her walk with the Lord, and that is so evident in her positive attitude, her encouraging spirit, and her ability to make anyone feel like they belong. It is a joy to have her as a student, and I know that she will achieve great things after she graduates from ECA. She is well deserving of this place in the National Honor Society, and I am so blessed to have the chance to introduce her to you all. Please welcome Mafe Diaz. At this time, Mr. Kwan will introduce Miguel Helvez. Hello, my name is Paul Kwan, and I have the honor of introducing a student who can be seen giving his best in everything he does. He can be seen humbly leading his peers, diligently striving for excellence, and proactively serving his surrounding communities. I'm honored to introduce Miguel Helvez. Miguel is an outstanding student who very visibly exemplifies the four pillars of the National Honor Society. Miguel exemplifies scholarship as he excels in class. As his physical education teacher, I don't recall him ever breaking the rules or even being late. And I'm sure if he was to be late, he would have a very valid reason, like rescuing a litter of puppies from a burning building on the brink of collapse. Miguel seeks to achieve and surpass both his and the school's academic levels of excellence. Miguel is also a leader. As a people-oriented, self-motivated leader, Miguel exercises good control over his own behavior and sets a great example for his peers. He's a visionary that plans for the future through concrete and quantifiable goals. Miguel loves to serve. He does not think twice when it comes to helping others out. It was a joy to see Miguel jumping at the opportunity to serve the Lord through this year's T4A middle school retreat. Upon further discussion after his return, his passion, discipline, and growth in his obedience to God was apparent. Young or old, believer or non-believer, Miguel is a steward for the Lord that will serve any de demographic with everything he's got. If you know Miguel, you will understand what I mean when I say he's one of uh, He's someone that he, you can count on. Whether you're a teacher, student, or a parent, if you ask Miguel to do something, like clean up after himself, finish his work on time, or maybe run 10 laps around the Eka field in under seven minutes, you will not have to ask him twice. He will make it happen without excuses. Miguel is responsible, solid, and most importantly, seeking to become more like our Lord Jesus. I'd like to congratulate Miguel and his family for this tremendous achievement. I'm proud of you, Miguel, and I can't wait to see what the Lord has in store for you. At this time, Mr. Becker will introduce Sophia Hoyos. Hey, Sophie, congrats on this big day. I'm so happy for you. I even shaved and got dressed up for you. And anyways, I'm excited for you today. I first met Sophie when she was in eighth grade in the worship elective. She played the piano, and that is pretty much all I remember from that time. However, it did not take long for her to make her presence felt in high school in Bible class. Her fun and outgoing personality helped her to stand out immediately. Shouts of, Mr. Becker! as she came into the classroom or passed by in the hallway, it made it hard not to notice her. But beneath that fun exterior, I could see God doing a work in her that was special to witness. She started developing a passion for Jesus that was accompanied by a growing mentality that she was going to be her own individual person, not caring what others thought of her as long as she was pointing them to Christ. She has become the kind of person that others want to be around. I think she's always been that way. She leads effortlessly. She can make people laugh and get them excited for whatever it is that she's leading. She also serves in a way that points people to Jesus. On our mission trip to Cucuta last year, she was willing to serve in whatever way was most helpful to the team. And it was a huge blessing. She cares deeply for the needs of others and is willing to sacrifice to help meet those needs. When I think of Sophie, I think of someone that could go anywhere and do anything the Lord has called her to do, no matter how hard the task, and do it with a joyful heart. 
I feel confident that her life is going to be one that counts for eternity in some big ways. She loves deeply, she leads passionately, and she serves humbly and compassionately. I can't think of a more deserving person to be a part of the National Honor Society. So, Ojos, congratulations. At this time, Mr. Salazar will introduce Paul Coe. This is the time for Paul Coe. When no one knows the answer for a math problem, he already has it. When everybody is still working in their own math test, he has already finished. Paul, as I told you before, God has given you a gift in math. You are brilliant, you are fast, and you are so dedicated to math. Let God use the gift he gave you for his glory. And you have the heart to do this. I've seen the passion you have to serve others. Standing up in the middle of the class, and then suddenly you are walking around your classmates with your notes in your hands and ready to help anyone who asks you. I've seen you doing the extra mile in service trips because I've seen you laying sick on your bed, frozen by the pain that caused you to walk that extra mile. I have heard your stories at home, supporting your family and praying for them. Definitely, God has given you a heart for Him. Respect, integrity, and responsibility. Those are words that God has placed in your heart, in your mind, through your parents and through the school you care. I pray God will hold you in His hands to place you wherever he wants in order for you to serve him with your gifts, with your tender heart for him. Thank you, Paul, for letting me have the privilege to introduce you. What a great gift. With you all, Paul Cole. At this time, Profe Andrea will introduce Susana Lopez. Hola a todos. Este es un video muy especial para una persona muy especial. Susi, bella como la flor. Ese es el significado de tu nombre. Recuerdo que hace muchos años, cuando estabas en segundo de primaria, llegaste un día muy contenta a la clase, con una invitación en tus manos, y era para que asistiera a tu bautizo. Me llamó mucho la atención que una niña tan pequeña ya tuviera esa plena seguridad de dar ese paso de obediencia. A lo largo de los años, he visto tu crecimiento, he visto tu madurez y he visto tu testimonio. He visto que a pesar de las adversidades, te has sabido sobreponer. Que a pesar de los errores, los has sabido reconocer. Y has logrado otra vez encaminarte en las sendas que Dios te ha mostrado. En este momento que hoy estás viviendo... Quiero que sepas que tan solo es un paso que das. Aquí, hasta ahora empieza todo lo que ha de venir para ti. Por eso, quiero animarte a que sigas siendo luz para otros, para que sigas siendo inspiración a otros, que siempre tengas esa disposición a servir, con un gesto, con una palabra, con una acción en el momento preciso. Hoy tengo el privilegio de presentarte ante este selecto grupo de estudiantes, ante esta sociedad de honor. Dios te bendiga. At this time, Ms. Conrad will introduce Valentina Nova. I have had the pleasure of knowing Valentina in various capacities for the past two years, most closely as her AP English teacher and her T4A mentor. Two years is not a long time, but it is long enough for me to know that Valentina embodies the qualities of a true National Honor Society member. I see her scholarship as she strives for excellence in all of her classes. While she has admitted the humanities are not her favorite, she's still committed to taking AP English this year, and in doing so, she discovered that she has more talent in the humanities than she previously recognized. Moreover, I see her service as she works tirelessly on bake sale days as a class treasurer. 
As a leader, Vale represents Christ well, one particular moment being when she spoke boldly to middle school students during their pre-retreat chapel. Last but not least, I see her character in her humility. She recognizes that her gifts are God-given and desires to use them to help others above herself. Vale, I admire your fearlessness. You are not afraid to embrace challenges. Rather, you strive to overcome them and refuse to quit. My prayer for you is that you will not shrink back in the face of hardship, but that you will press on. Thinking of you, I was reminded of Paul's words in Philippians 3 when he states that he will press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. May you always keep your eyes fixed firmly on Christ and his call on your life above the things of this world that vie for your attention. Vale, I love you and I'm so proud of you. Congratulations on becoming a member of the National Honor Society. At this time, Ms. Franz will introduce Isabella Pardo. It is my honor to introduce Isabella Pardo from the 11th grade into this NHS ceremony. Isa comes to class every day with the biggest smile on her face, always laughing, um, which just shows so much joy, <laughs> all the joy that she finds in her daily life. Um, Isa is a true leader in her class and in the school as ECA community. I always see her willing to help and help out with a teacher, with a staff member, with another peer, um, and truly puts others before herself. I am so excited to see what Isa gets to do next. Um, this type of leadership is going to take her so far. She's going to move mountains. Congratulations. Let's give a round of applause for our new members. <laughs> Inductees. We are going to pause for a moment so that your parents can light your candle. By lighting the candle, you are agreeing with the creeds represented by all of the candles and officially joining the National Honor Society. With your candle lit, please repeat the NHS pledge with the current National Honor Society members. I pledge myself to uphold the high purpose of the honor societies to which I have been selected. I will be true to the principles for which it stands. I will be loyal to my school. And will maintain and encourage service, leadership, and character. I pledge to maintain a high scholastic standing and to hold as fundamental and worthy an untarnished character. To endeavor intelligently, courageously, to be a leader, and to give myself freely in service to others. In so doing, I shall prove myself worthy of a place in the honor society. And to close, please welcome our school director, Mrs. Afanador. I would like to thank Mrs. Guzman, Mrs. Leonard, the members of the induction ceremony committee, and our logistics team for their hard work in organizing this year's induction ceremony. Please join me in thanking them with a round of applause. Thank you for all attend thank you for all all of you for attending our National Honor Society induction ceremony, a very unique one for this year. Please join me once again in applauding all of our new Honor Society members. Thank you. And now I'd like to ask Ms. Jeske to come and bless our students, please. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father Jesus, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for um, this opportunity to celebrate all of these students who have worked so hard over the years in high school to, um, to make it to this point. God, we, we pray that they would continue to seek service, leadership, scholarship, and character in the coming years, um, whether they're here at school or whether they're um, moving on to something else, God. Um, we pray that they would continue to seek you and your will for them in their lives. And um, I pray that they would believe that you are good and you are working in their lives no matter what their lives look like, no matter what is happening. God, you are good and you are consistent and faithful. We thank you so much for that, God, and we give um, these students' lives and their futures to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you so much for being a part of this special evening. Congratulations, new inductees.